Guys, we're going to get started tonight. If you have not done that yet, you should have a job description. You should have a map of the building, and you should have a sheet that says interacting tips down the side of it. Just a few things before we get going tonight. Um, if you don't have those things, please go, up, go ahead and see one of the ladies at the back table, and they'll help you out. The other thing is if you were placed in a job that you didn't sign up for or we've somehow gotten that out of order, I'm just going to ask you at the end of it to come up here to this side right here, and we'll get that all taken care of so that that Friday night there's no confusion on that. Okay, also, if you, are, if, if you have any questions that you don't want to ask publicly or whatever when we get to the questions time, uh, I will be around here, and a lot of the leadership team that's put this together will be around here to be able to answer those questions, all right? As we get started, I just want to tell you guys, first of all, it, it, these events for me personally, as our staff in this church are a big deal. Uh, very few opportunities do you get to, one, just provide a night for people. I'm sure some of you can remember, maybe some of you sooner than, than others that can remember your prom nights. And you can remember what that was like, the excitement that was with that. And all of these individuals, they have been excited about this event since the day after we did it last year. Uh, I know Curtis Mason, who's here from Mosaic, we've talked about it, and uh, he's been, uh, people have been just chewing his ear off since then of when's the next one, when are we going to do this again? So to these special needs guests that are coming, it's a big deal. And it's also a big deal that you guys have chosen to be a part of that night, and uh, you guys are going to, I know, do your job to excellence to make sure that that is a great night. At the end of the day, we believe as a church that it's these kind of events of what heaven's going to look like. Uh, and this is why we do that. We get to provide this night that's just great for, for serving other people and just making them feel special. First thing I just want to get out of, uh, out of the way is just um, letting you know a few things that this applies to everybody. And then we're going to kind of break down some individual group things as far as assignments go. The first thing is, is that you need to, everybody who is volunteering in any capacity needs to be here at 5 o'clock. Guests will be arriving somewhere around 545, and it may take, we have 338 people that are volunteering for this night, so just the registration process alone is going to take a long time. So if you can make a commitment to be here at 5 o'clock and be patient with us as we get everybody checked in, and then at 530 we want to have a meeting just to, just to have one final push of what the night's going to look like. Also, besides this room here, I want to let you know that uh, we have two other campuses, our Mount Sterling campus and our Keokuk campus that will be joining us that night. So it's just not Macomb's campus here. So uh, they're going to be part of this training via video. So I'm glad that they are joining us tonight. But it's going to be uh, just an opportunity that for everybody to get here so we can start off. The worst thing that can happen this night is to be able to start late and then it puts us behind and we cheat the guest out of even a second of dance, uh, dancing time there. The other thing I want to let you know is just because your job responsibility maybe was front-end loaded, so maybe you're doing guest check-in uh, or food service, and that job gets over. I believe this to be true, that the more people on the dance floor, the better the night is. There are still people that are talking about, last year there was WIU football and volleyball players on the dance floor with me. I mean, that was a big deal because they chose to do that. So uh, I want to tell all of you guys, there's, if, if you have even the slightest bit of rhythm, we would love for you to be part of the dance floor even when your job gets done. The other thing I want to tell you, it is a prom, and so we would like for everybody to dress appropriately when it comes to that. Uh, even to the point, uh, guys, we don't have as much of a selection as we do, but if there's those of you who it's been a long time since you've been in a prom dress and wish you knew where yours was or whatever, we have ample amount of prom dresses here, so feel free to grab one of those if you would uh, before you leave today. Guys, wear a suit, wear dress clothes. Uh, we want to make this a special night, and just setting the tone with our dress attire is, is what that looks like. A couple other things as we get going. Anything that I refer to, so the way we refer to things here at the church is when I say anything behind the glass, what I'm referring to is when you walk in our lobby there, if you were to look to the left, you'll actually see a glass wall. Everything that's behind there, I'm referring to behind the glass or things that are on this side of the glass. So when I say those, that's where we're at. If you are looking at the map, the map, if you were to turn it, most of the stuff is going to be behind the glass. That's where you're going to see what those, what those activities look like. So right when guests get in here, uh, what they will do is they will go into the studio. And when I refer to the studio, that would be if you find the front doors, the first doors to the left are the studio. And that's where all the buddies and all the guests are going to start their night and check in. Otherwise, if you are doing food service, after you do the check-in, you'll be in here. If you're doing activities, you'll be behind the glass. If you're doing any kind of check-in for volunteers, you will be uh, on, the, on this end behind the glass to where we do those things. So just to kind of give you a layout of what I'm referring to. 
So buddies, once, once buddies and guests check in, you will run them through a process behind the glass there that includes everything from getting their hair done, getting their makeup done, getting a crown put on them or a tiara, depending on if they're a male or female. And then also the last thing is before they hit the red carpet, they will get a flower, a corsage or boutonniere put on them, and then they will hit the red carpet and their night will start. So that's kind of going to be the pathway back there. If you are also uh, a part of any type of, with, uh, as a buddy, they can do anything on a free, a free reign of the building the entire night. So unfortunately, maybe some of your guests wants to shoot baskets all night. Well, that's what you need to do with them. But the, all the activities and anything else will happen, will happen behind the glass there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into individual jobs. If you have a question about that individual job, just kind of make a note of it, and we'll have a time for questions at the end. But I want to make sure I cover everybody's job and what that night uh, looks like. So first of all, the biggest volunteer area that we have is, is those of you who are buddies. So if you are a buddy, every single person that is any kind of volunteer will, will come down to the doorway. You'll see a thing that says that children, kids check in above the door. Every single person that's volunteering that night will start there. You will go there. There will be four computers that will be manned by somebody. You'll give them their name. They'll type it in, and you'll get a name, a name printed out, okay, if you are a regular volunteer. Everybody with me on that, where that is? You, if you, when you go, if you look in that corner of the lobby, you'll see that check-in area, and, that's, and you'll get your name tag printed out there. So, buddies, your job from the time, you're going to get a card, where, which is going to be your registration piece. And that is going to, as you sit in, the, in the, uh, um, the studio area there, there's going to be two sides of the room, one for guests, one for buddies. And the way this, this entire thing is going to work is you're going to get your card, and when you get to the front of the line, you're going to be paired up with a guest, and you will get your card and their card stapled together. On that card will give you any information that you need about your guest. So let's just say, for example, your guest needed their food blended because they are not able to chew. It would say that on their card so you would know that, and then there will also be instructions given to you where you take your food to be able to use the blender to be able to do that. For those of you who are panicking right now, out of 130-some-odd guests, there's only three of them, so that's not going to be a huge part of the night. But just those information. If for some reason your guests cannot have their picture taken for social media, it will be marked on there so that they know that. But everything you get will have two cards, your name and their name. When you go after you get checked in, you will, you will then check their code in. You'll get a number. You need to write that number on your card because you'll be responsible for getting them back to getting their right coat on at the end of the night. Okay, your job as a buddy is basically this. Whatever they ask you to do that falls on the line of appropriate, you do that night. Shoot baskets, play carpet ball, sing karaoke. We had one girl last year that she didn't leave the karaoke room, and that was somebody's night, but it was special to her. Some of you will be sore the next morning because your, your partner is going to dance you into the floor. You think that's funny. It, it happens every single year. You think you're in shape and somebody dances, uh, d dances your feet off all, all night long with that. Um, when you arrive here, buddies will be the only ones that will eat in the auditorium with their guest. All other general volunteers, we will have a meal for you, but it's not the sit-down meal. We're going to feed everybody else pizza because you're going to be working while they, while they eat. Buddies, once you get your guest... You're going to basically behind the glass, you're going to follow a straight line. It's going to be coat check. Then you're going to walk down further, get their hair done and makeup done. Then you're going to come back to the, what looks like a McDonald's play place. And that is where they're going to get their crown or tiara and their flower. That's the last thing you do before they hit the red carpet. Once they hit the red carpet, they're going to stop in front of a, a big banner with decorations on this red carpet. They're going to get their picture taken. That's the picture that we give them as a gift. So do your thing. Make sure you're looking great. Make sure they're smiling, you'll get your picture taken, and then you will, from there, there'll be cheers, everybody will be going crazy, and then you'll bring them into here. Around this entire auditorium will be tables and chairs set up, and in the middle here will be a, will be a wood flooring that's going to be our dance floor with all the DJ lights, all that kind of stuff. So once you come in here, you get them fed, and then from that, not that, once they eat their meal and you eat your meal as a buddy, the night is theirs. So from that point on, you ask them what they want to do, you know what's available, and then you go and you, you do that with them. But your major, major job is to make sure that, one, you give them all the opportunities. If they don't want to get their hair done, no problem. Pass it. If they don't want to wear the crown, no problem. Pass it on. Okay? The last thing you will do, the last two things you will do before the night ends, you have to make sure they leave here with their coat, and you have to make sure they leave here with a gift bag. Okay, so if you get them out of here to their caretaker or their, their correct vehicle with those two things and they've had a great night, uh, you, ha you have done your job. So that is the buddy role. The next job, if you've gotten that, is if you are part of volunteer check-in. This includes everybody except for buddies. 
Okay, so you will, be, you will be checking in every single volunteer. We will have a process set up if for some reason somebody doesn't show up on the computer, but it should be as simple as what's your name, type it in, hit enter, a, a, a name tag will print off, you send them on your way. Okay, um, again, you are the ones that I need, if you are part of this check-in ministry, I would like for you to be here before, just in enough time to make sure we start right at 5. So, you know, if you want to get something to eat at 445 and then do that, if you want us to have somebody go get you food, whatever it is, but at 5 o'clock, we need to be starting right away if you're a part of that. Um, the next thing is if you are part of that team, that volunteer check-in team, if that was your name, Sarah Oster is, and, and Kristen Harper are heading that up. So Sarah would like to meet with you over in this area at the end of this time if you are a part of that team just to kind of give you final instructions for what that night is going to be. If you are part of our guest and buddy registration team, again, you will need to be here at 5 o'clock, get checked in, and then we will, we will have you in the studio to explain what that process is going to look like for the night. Uh, the biggest thing that you will do is making sure that we are checking off that every single buddy is here and every single guest is here. I also want to say this. There are some of you that signed up to be buddies that right now we have more buddies than we have guests. So there are some, if the night ended right now, which we're still getting registrations, there would be 10 or 12 people that wouldn't get. What we're going to do is once we get towards the end, we're going to start doubling people up so that everybody can still be a buddy, but you may not be by yourself with that person. But we are going to try to make sure that everybody that's signed up to be a buddy gets to be a buddy that night. But it may look a little different towards the end than what it is there. Okay. Uh, once, once you are part of that registration and you're given the buddy what they need as far as both the name badges, then you're, you are, you're going to move on to the next person. But you, your whole job is to, to make sure that that registration process, we get people paired up and we get them on down the road so we can keep the night moving and get and go as, as quickly as possible. Um, if you're part of the parking lot team, the biggest thing, we're going to have lots of people, lots of different uh, uh, campus people coming here that maybe have never been here for the first time. I'm going to ask those of you that are volunteering to park as far away from the front door as you can just so we can provide first class service for those people that are guests. Also, if you're part of that parking lot team, you may be having to help unload a walker or unload a wheelchair or something like that. Just, just making sure that you get people directed to where they need to go as far as parking, as far as where the front doors are, as far as getting them unloaded. That would be all part of that parking lot team there. If you are an MC, uh, meaning that you are, or you are responsible for announcing the guest at the red carpet, your job is to get the card from the buddy. You'll, you'll announce the name just like the you know, starting lineup at a sporting event, get, get the crowd riled up. Once their name, everybody cheers, you make sure you give the buddy their card back because that's their information for the night, and then you are able to uh, go on to the next guest. Your job is to kind of be keeping the whole red carpet moving so we can get all the guests through as quickly as we possibly can. If you're part of the paparazzi, basically we're going to have an area right by the red carpet that everybody is going to be at. We would encourage you to bring, if you have a camera that has a flash on it, if you have a cell phone that can take pictures, if you have whatever, bring your loud voice for sure. We want that to be just a rocking time. So when they walk out of those doors and they hear their name, it's absolute pandemonium that people are cheering for them and yelling for them. And, and, and that is a going to be a really, really uh, good, good night. If there is a guest that can't get their picture taken, we, you will know that. We will, we will make sure that the MC knows that before we announce their name even because he'll, he'll know that based on having that information on that card. If you are part of the greeting ministry, you're going to be responsible for everything in the foyer area when you first walk in. You need to make sure that you are very familiar with that map because people are going to be, you're going to be the first line of people that they may ask questions to. Hey, where do I go for this? What, where, if I'm a buddy, where do I go? Where do I check in if I'm a general volunteer? All those things and make sure you, you know where things are at so you can point people in that right area. The other thing, if you're a greeter, I just want you to be aware of in this corner and in our conference room that's right through those doors, we're going to have a respite room. Uh, this year they opened up the Night to Shine prom to those individuals that are 14 years and older, which means we could potentially have um, special needs guests that are still living at home with their parents that can still come, where last year you had to be 18 and older. So why we have a respite room is there's some parents that don't want their younger child to be here by themselves, but they would like to have a break for the night but still be here. So we'll have chairs and seating over here, and then we'll have a conference room for them to chill out, but they can still watch their son or daughter have a, have a great time at the prom. So greeters, you'll need to know that that respite room is back here. The other thing you'll need to know, because people ask you this, all volunteer food is going to be in our kitchen and coffee bar area. That's probably the next best question you're going to do. I would also ask that you be familiar with our, where our restrooms are at. And that reminds me, if you are a buddy, uh, Curtis and I have worked, they're going to have mosaic staff that are outside of the bathrooms. At no time is that, is that something I want you to put yourself uh, in that situation. So if you have a buddy who needs to use the restroom that cannot do it by themselves, 
Um, Curtis, you want to just stand up so they can see, you know, this is Curtis from Mosaic. He will be the biggest, the, the biggest help for us that night as far as special needs guests that will be here with us. So uh, when that happens, greeters, make sure you know where it is, but buddies, make sure you know that that's not your role completely. Uh, for those of you who that are going to work our coat check room, um, if you were to look down our offices, you'll see a hallway that goes beside our offices. We're going to have lined with coat racks, and all it is is simply you're going to take their coat, put it on a hanger. There's not going to be a number system. It's just going to be making sure that you are there, take the coat, hang it up, and then all of you that are volunteering, my hope is that there's not very many of you that have the same coats. When you get done with the night, you'll go down this hallway, and you'll find your coat on one of the 15 or 16 coat racks that are there. But if you are doing that, you're going to be, if you are part of the guest check-in, there will be a hallway that you're going to be a part of that will have racks the exact same way. Once they start down the hallway after getting checked in, the next step they'll do is they'll come to you. You'll take just the guest's coat. The only separation for coats we're going to have that night is for those guests versus, versus general volunteers there. If you're part of food service, uh, which is a, a, a big chunk of our WIU football squad and a lot of our high school students, the food is going to be served on the outside here. We're going to have pipe and drape curtaining in that back corner where all the, all the people that are serving food are setting up. So everything food-related and drink-related will start behind that curtain. And you will, you, will be, you will have one of two jobs. One, you will be asking which meat choice that they are choosing and side choice that they would want. And you are just going to that table, getting two orders that you can carry, taking them to there. Or the other job you'll have is you'll have a pitcher of water, a pitcher of lemonade, and you'll be going from guest to, from table to table filling up drinks. Always serve the guest first. And the buddy second. There will also be uh, opportunities. There will be, there'll be dessert, too, that will come after that. But if you are part of food service, the majority of your night is going to be in here. And there will be uh, Andre Harper, who's our student pastor here, will be kind of the go-to person to be able to answer any of those questions as things go on. If you are part of, uh, you're, you need, do need to find a way to blend that in our coffee bar area where we make drinks. We will have, we'll have the blender set up to be able to do the food processing for those people who require that that night. I would, all ask, I would ask this, those of you, once the meal is over, um, feel free again, fill that dance floor. We need you guys to, to create that, that hype and that buzz there. And, I, and I, I saw some of you last year, some of you have moves, so I'd like to see that. If you're part of the security team, um, we, we just basically want you to be moving and being active the entire night, just making sure that there aren't any issues. I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt we're not going to have any security breach stuff on a night like this. However, uh, it's probably the biggest event going on on February 10th, that Friday night, so you just never know. Uh, we'll have a full staff security team here, and we'll also have two police officers that will be part of the night in case something would go, would go wrong or go south on us on that. They will be dressed in security uniforms, and obviously the police officers you'll notice because they'll be, they'll be dressed in uniform. But if you are part of that security team, your job is Bob Gooding will be leading that up, and he will have you positioned. Some of you will be positioned the entire night. Some of you will be walking the entire building just making sure that there's no, there's no security issues there. If you're part of the medical team, we will have you stationed in here back by our tech booth. And basically what, what your job is is if something would happen that night or we would have some kind of allergic reaction or some kind of medicine need or anything like that, they will all go through those two. And, and those individuals are uh, going to be certified medically, all those things. So it shouldn't be any issue whatsoever. We will also have Mosaic staff here that have, if, in case there's any questions on what medicine might look like, but we will have that fully staffed medical team. If you're on the T-shirt and gift takeaway team, up against our red wall at our guest services is where that is going to happen. Um, we will have, for, if you guys would want to purchase a T-shirt that night as a memory of the night, we'll have T-shirts available that say Tim Tebow Foundation Night to Shine. That's also where you will pick up your gift for your guest if you are a buddy that night up against that red wall. You'll also be part of, during the event, getting those gifts ready to go, uh, making sure that all the different gifts that they get from Tim Tebow are in those bags and, and whatnot that night. If you're part of hair and makeup, right on the other side of the, uh, of the red wall, there are two classrooms as you go back through there. Those where our preschool are. In those two classrooms, we'll have multiple people that will be doing hair and makeup. That will be open the majority of the night. So if you're buddy, if you're a buddy and your guest doesn't want to get their hair done right away, but afterwards and they realize it's not a scary thing, they want to go do that, or maybe they didn't know it was available or what it was going to be like and now they want to, feel free to take them back there and get their hair done throughout the entire night. If there's those of you, who, uh, you that are here that want to get your hair done, we have a couple buddies last year get their hair done too. Hey, that's fine. We're going to have plenty of people back there to do it. Um, I would also ask that, uh, you know, make, just making sure that um, 
that those people know what, what's going on back there as far as what's available. There should be multiple people doing makeup. They can do everything from lipstick to the full face makeup type, type of thing. Just use, use judgment on that, um, making sure that uh, it's the, if they are, would happen to be, I can't imagine they would be allergic to makeup, but I would ask those questions just in case. I would rather find out beforehand before we do something like that. But again, in those two rooms, there will be plenty of people that are, that are there to do hair and makeup throughout the, the most of the, be, of the majority of the night there. If you're one of our social media photographers, your job the entire night is just to be taking pictures and, and posting things throughout the night on, on social media, uh, both yourself and I would just love for the majority of them to go through our Crossing uh, Macomb Facebook page. That way I can also put them all together and be able to get them out to people and share those albums at a later time. But your job is just throughout the entire night just to get pictures of every single thing that are going on from shooting baskets to dancing to the meal uh, to registration to all those things and making sure we just create a buzz in the community for what we're getting to do for these individuals. Last two jobs in the play place there is what I said where crowns and tiaras are going to be as well as flowers. So if you're part of that team, you'll be the last stop before they hit the red carpet. And your job is to basically make sure they have a crown if they are a male or a tiara if they are a woman. And then they will get a flower put on them or pinned on them depending on male or female. And then they will hit the red carpet. You guys are also, once they get all those things, are responsible for kind of making, the, making sure they're forming a line afterwards to be able to hit that red carpet to keep that process going that much smoother there. So you'll be part of those three things to, to be able to get that going. The last thing is everything that happens in our children's area back there, we're considering activities. So that's everything from karaoke to basketball to carpet ball. We'll have nine squares set up back there in the air. We'll have, car, we'll have all the, our, our Nintendo Wii set up back there, video games set up. All those things going on so guests can do that whatever they want uh, the, in, the entire night. So I just want to make sure that um, if you are part of that team, your job is just to camp out back there and kind of go from there. Uh, the next thing I want to cover for you is I think there's always just a little bit of misconception or a little bit of uneasiness when it comes to interacting with, with those individuals um, that, that are, are special needs in any capacity. And we are going to be having people that have, have needs that, that are a wide range there. But just a few things on that sheet that, that you, you picked up that I just think are good pointers that Curtis uh, kind of walked through that night or for that night. And I think that there, there are a lot of things on there that are pretty self-explanatory, but I think there's times that um, we, we're going to make it more complicated. But this sheet right here just kind of makes it a lot easier for you to do. Basically, just simply being able to talk through things, saying hello to them, taking that, that first interaction and just making it a positive one. You know, having conversations, don't force it. There's a lot of them in the beginning of the night that are going to be really timid because they don't know you and you don't know them. But I think as you will get to going, it'll, it'll get to a point where there's a lot of them that have already hoped, there's hoping that the people they had last year are going to be there again so they can be paired up with them. And so as the night goes on, it's going to get that much, that much easier and that much more comfortable. So just making sure that there, there's just natural conversation with that. Also, uh, routine is important for them. So understand that this is something that may be out of their routine. And that may cause behaviors. I don't know. I'm, I'm somewhat like that, too. I have my daily routines. I'm sure you do, too. And this, this may be out of that routine. So just, just being patient with them and making sure that if they have questions or they're uneasy, maybe you need to walk them and show them everything that's around there. Maybe that's your first step. You'll just kind of get a feel for that with them. Um, a lot of times we want to tend to focus on their disabilities instead of their abilities. But by you talking to them, they're going to tell you what things they love to do and what, what things they can do or what things they're passionate about doing. So just having those conversations and really focusing on the things that they tell you that they love to do. You're going to know right away if they're a dancer or they're not a dancer. You're probably going to know right away if you ever see them on the karaoke stage or if they want to shoot basket. But just, just having that conversation of what are their abilities that they can do. Um, also, silence is okay. Don't feel like that if they don't talk your ear off, it's a bad thing. Some of them are just happy to be here and just being a part of the evening, and that is, that is totally fine. Um, also, make sure you're listening. A lot of times being an active listener is, is a big deal that they may be trying to communicate something to you that they may have to communicate a few times for you to get that. That's fine. Just make sure you are actively listening and, and, and trying your best to understand them. If you have to ask them to repeat themselves or you have to maybe find somebody from Mosaic that works with them that could help you, totally fine that night. And it's okay if you have to say, can you repeat yourself and just get them to a point where they are, they are definitely comfortable with that. Uh, when it comes to touch, I would say this, just think about what would, be, what would be acceptable in any other area of your life as far as at work or as far as if you're a student at school or if you're here at church, and follow those same guidelines. Um, if there is, if there is uh, somebody that, that, that is uh, trying to touch you inappropriately, just we'll, we'll, get along, we'll get 
um, with somebody from where they live, or, or Curtis will help us point in the right direction with who that may be. But I just always want to use that guideline. You know, you're talking about slow dancing. You're talking about whatever situations that could happen there. And just want to make sure that when it comes to that, um, that would be the way that, that we, will, we will handle that and think about that. Lastly is this. Um, offer to help them, but don't force it. If they don't want your help walking down the aisle, if they don't want your help cutting up their food, if they don't want, whatever that may be, um, it's the same way. You wouldn't want somebody to do that to you if you didn't want that, that to happen. So just they're going to give you all kinds of indication as far as whether they want help or whether they don't want help. So the last thing uh, before we finish up, or do you guys have any questions that, hey, I didn't cover, I didn't answer about the night that will make you feel that much more comfortable about uh, what, what's going to happen that night? And there's no, there's no foolish questions, maybe for those of you especially who have never done it before. Any, any questions about where your job is going to be, where you check in, any questions about the night, I'd love to answer those. Curtis, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but as long as it's a whole group type photo, there shouldn't be any issue. And we, everybody has signed a photo release. And if they did not sign it for some reason, Curtis will let me know and I will make sure that that person knows. But even if they don't have a photo release signed, if they are part of an entire dance floor, that's not an issue. It's more if you take just their own individual shot and, and put it on Facebook, that would be an issue. No, you can unless you are told they can't have that on there. That's totally fine. We're really talking, yeah. So if you get your card and it has a red dot, for example, and that would tell you they can't have, we may do it differently. But you'll have some indicator that will let you know so you would know you can't do it either. Yep. It's more if that, if that special needs guest would be singled out in any way and they can't have their picture taken, that would be the one that would be not right versus an entire dance floor, a basketball court full of, of guests. What else? Yep. It'll start at 6 o'clock and it'll, it'll get over at 9. I would say for you, I would make sure that you, we'll probably shut, your, shut hair and makeup type, type things down probably by 8.30 or so so you can actually be completely done and out of here. If they haven't gotten their hair done or whatever in the first two and a half hours, then sure. And I would say this, too, there's gonna, I think we're going to have a huge team of hair and makeup people. If you guys say, hey, why don't you do it the first hour, I'm going to go dance, and then I'll come back and do it the second hour, that's totally fine. Totally fine. What else? Yep. The only thing I would say is if, if you wanted to be able to... Um, be there to be able to help them load back into the vehicles to go back home. Outside of that, they should know where they park, so you should be good. Other questions? Okay. Two last things. Remember, if you have a job, if you, if you didn't find your name on the check-in list, uh, please come up here and we'll get you taken care of. Or if you were assigned a job that you did not sign up for and you're not comfortable with the job you were given, come up here and we will, and Jenny will be up here to meet with you. If you were on Sarah's check-in team for general volunteers, not buddies or guests, be over in this section right here. And I'd also like to remind you, if you want to grab prom dresses, uh, please do that. But before you get out of here, I'm, I would like to just uh, pray real quick for the evening. And I can't, uh, I can't say this enough, but thank you guys so much. Uh, there's nine of us here on staff. We could never, ever do this if it wasn't for you guys. It's a big deal that you've chosen to partner with us, and I know we're going to make that February 10th Night to Shine prom very, very special. And so I want to just say thank you uh, to you guys for, for making that happen and uh, just being willing to give up your Friday night or for some of you maybe even step out of your comfort zones to be a buddy or whatever it may be. But thank you so much for that. So, AJ?
And if you do have a vacuum and you can bring it, well, AJ, why don't you just be by the door? If you can let AJ know, hey, I'll bring my vacuum because we definitely will need, we'll have to turn the, the church back around so we can have service on Sunday morning. So be a lot of pick up and clean up that night that will happen. Okay. Any other questions or any other things before we'll pray and get out of here? I also, I didn't say everything I was supposed to say. Sarah reminded me. Sarah would like to see not only just volunteer registration, but also if you're part of the paparazzi team, she'd like to see you over here. So both of those groups. And then if you have job responsibility changes or weren't on a list, see Jenny right over here in this section. All right, let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for this group of people. Thank you for their willing hearts. I thank you for the Tim Tebow Foundation that's willing to, to partner with us in doing this. I pray that you would uh, overcome anything that doesn't go exactly to plan, that you would work out ahead of us and take care of those things so we can just make this a, a special night for all of our guests. And I, and I just pray that uh, you are here and you are uh, working in, in each one of us as we prepare ourselves just to be a servant that night and to give ourselves um, and give our time up for that night. Lord, again, thank you for these willing hearts, and I pray you would do great things through this night through each individual that's here. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys.